Hey watchlisters, your girl Ramat is back with another movie talk. Can you guess the film? It's the buzzword DJ Oshiberu movie, Gangs of Lagos. Joining me today is a movie producer, director, filmmaker, Mr. Dio Clement. Thank you for Thank having you for me. You're welcome. Thank you for joining me too. <laughs> The movie Gangs of Lagos has been uh, the most talked about movie for the past few days and it has there's been mixed feelings on social media about the movie and before we get right into it let's take a quick look at the trailer and be right back Kadara destiny who decides where we are born the life we have When I was a baby was the premonition that I will not only become a street king, <laughs> but I will die young like my father. Why you for lie? Why you for lie? Why is it lie lie? Saleko is a jungle. Everyone does what they must to survive. The rules of the streets were simple. Be a lion, boy. No one lives just. I'm the plan already. You know. It was the best of times in Zaleku, but nothing good last long. They say kings are never buried alone. I'm the man already. You're One day, the eyes will open to their power, and there will be no hiding place for the wicked. Is no go sleep? How? A million and one people willing to die for a cause they know absolutely nothing about. Kadara, destiny. Who decides where we are born? The life we have. Not already. Don't be nervous. I see your hands are sweaty. Welcome back. The movie which was produced by Jade Oshiberu tells the story of three friends. Obalola, played by Toby Bakari. Ifi, played by Chike, a.k.a. Boo of the Bullets. <laughs> and Keith, played by Adesua Wellington. The story centers around these three friends, their lives in the hood, and um, how it revolves around crime and violence. So, Mr. Dio, mm. I'm pretty sure you've seen the movie. Yes, I have. So, the story, um, the storyline is something I believe a lot of Lagosians, especially those living in Saleko, can relate with. Mm. And um, we know that not really, not just in Lagos State. Basically, when it comes to living in the food, things like this, um, the issue of um, fight, violence, crime, you know, it's something that is apparent in the mm. ghettos and all that. And I feel that Jade Oshiberi was able to encompass all this in the story, or rather in the movie, mm. and which I feel is a good thing because it's one thing about movie for me is knowing that this is a reality for many viewers watching it. Yeah. So for you, what do you think about the story? Do you think it's something that the story was worth um, telling? And do you think um, Jade was able to establish the story properly and tell it as it is? Um, I think the depictions of violence and the um, street life were very, very, um, were very, very clear and very, very brutal. So I think in the intensity with which it is portrayed, it's hard to watch that this is something that goes down in the streets of Lagos. However, I think the story around it, in my opinion, is not well grounded. Um, there are a lot of interesting ideas that are introduced in the film, but ultimately are superfluous to the story being told. So when you watch the film, 
apart from the few moments where the graphic violence establishes the hard life in Lagos, the story itself meanders mm. because there is no central focus the story s seems to be following. It seems to be following a thread and then after 10 minutes it leaves that thread, starts a new thread, follows that thread after another 10 minutes. So the story just meanders throughout. Okay, so I think I get your point. But then I think for me, I think what Jadi was trying to do was to tell the story of a typical um, person staying or that lives in an enclaved crime area. So like how their daily lives, what happens every day. So I read somewhere on social media where people of the opinion that the movie should have, or rather this, this story should have been told in a series, like more of, should have been made into a series rather than a movie. Now probably that could have given it, um, or given the director and the producer enough room to establish the story. And then you made mention about the intensity of the violence and crime, mm. which for me, I don't think there's anything wrong with the intensity or that was in any way in... No, I said the intensity was fine. I'm saying okay. apart from the points of where it shows that intensity of the crime, okay. the story that surrounds it meanders. Okay. You understand? Mm. I think I think the, the, the excuse of it should have been a series can be given to any film but mm. then it's no longer a feature film the point of a feature film is you have a story that you believe you can tell within the allotted two hours time or three hours or whatever if you believe your story is bigger than a feature film then you will do a series mm. every film every film that has come out will have some ideas that everybody believed if it was a series would have been better explored. So I don't think that is a good excuse to give a movie, give a movie that intentionally is written and directed to come out as a feature length movie. Okay, but some yeah. Nigerians don't really, they don't completely agree with that. But then, uh, talking about the story, and um, recently I read, uh, there's a press release from the Lagos State government saying that the movie depict uh, the cultural misrepresentation sort of like it doesn't the really AO. tell yes the uh, your masquerade that uh, the masquerade does not revolve around crime they're not criminals and the way they were depicted in the movie is against is contrary to what they really stand for the value or rather what the uh, your masquerade stands for so what do you think do you feel do you think they really have a stand or rather whatever their complaint is is really really valid i think there are two things there I think the first is, within the story they are telling, the Ayo masquerade was more of a symbol for something they wanted to tell within the story. That's what I think. However, the other part is, there's no how you are going to touch on a cultural aspect of any nation and not have people worried of misrepresentation. So. I could make a film about Shongo tomorrow. <laughs> and the, the Yoruba historians or the people who have deified Shongo can come tomorrow and tell me, why would you do such a thing? It's a, it's a dishonor to our great Shongo and all that. But Regardless that of whatever intentions I have as a filmmaker for the, the character. So I think it's a dicey subject. Mm. But I think you have to think of it in terms of the story itself, what was the point of that thing? Was it meant to be a cultural representation or something that was symbolic in the, in movie? the movie? You understand? But I, I think there's no, there's, n there's no good way to answer it because it's, it's something that is tied to people's culture and people are very, very, very passionate about their culture. If I were to rate the movie on a scale of 1 to 10, I would rate it 8 because of its originality, authenticity, and the fact that a lot of Nigerians, especially Lagosians, can relate to the story. It's what we see every day happen. Even if we don't see it, we hear it, right? So for you, what would you rate the movie on a scale of like, What would you rate the movie? Because given what she just said about the story, what would you rate the story, rather? Well, this is from the point of view of a storyteller. 
I think that the story, based on how it is presented, mm -hmm. I'd read it a four. And the reason I'd read it a four is because the story is not centered and there is no through line. The story meanders too much to the point where majority of the scenes that go around the so-called story are superfluous. So what keeps happening is you watch... Okay, let me give an example. After the scene where the assassin comes in to kill the man in his air or these guys, yes. the story starts with two boys trying to rob a child, uh, rob a mother and her child. Mm -hmm. And then after they rob, they go and split the loot with their friend, the lady, and then they talk about how they want to be capo and all that. And the rest of the film, nothing establishes that they actually want to be capo. Nothing. <laughs> so if you start your film and the, sen the main, so-called main characters in your film, make sure that, mention that this is what they want to do. And then the whole film goes on and none of that matters anymore. Then it means it was not necessary to be in your film. But now you've set an expectation for your audience. Same thing with the um, lady that one of the boys fell in love with. He fell in love with the daughter of one of the gang members. Gang, yeah, gang leader. One of the gang leaders. Yeah. <coughs> and she was out of the film. For, for 10 years. For majority of the film. And when she came back, after they established their love connection, that was the end. Mm. She never, she didn't play any part in the story anymore. Same thing for the female friend among the three of them. Even though it's supposed to be a story about three friends, if you remove the third friend, there is still that story. So the third she friend, does not add female, anything. Okay. She does not add anything, story-wise. If she went out in that story, the story would have still worked. So that's what I mean. So when it keeps happening like that, they come up with the, the idea of the London dude. Mm -hmm. London came in the beginning of the film, and we didn't see him until later on in the film, and none, none of the interactions actually mattered to the young people who acted in the film. It, it didn't make any need. There was no need for that. The boy with the prophecy. But this, this one, I think, is more of my own bias towards it. The boy with the prophecy of how he was going to lead the gangs, and he would die young. Die young, yeah, that's so bad. What makes a story interesting when prophecies are involved, especially when a negative prophecy comes to, is people trying their hardest to avoid such prophecies. Such prophecies. Mm. And every time they try to do everything to end that prophecy or to avoid that prophecy, all they are doing is dragging themselves closer, closer to that to prophecy. It. In this film, he just said, yes, I was destined to be the ruler. I lived the life, now I'm the ruler. The, the thread of, yes, all these people are dying for one man up there who doesn't care about them. And how did the film end? A lot of people died for him, and now he's on top. So he didn't do anything. The thread of him reading, trying to learn programming and all that so that he could find his way out of the gang life was thrown away. The lady that had the child for Panama, Ife. Ife, yeah. It came in and it was thrown away. You see, so as you're watching the film, things just keep coming up that serve no purpose in the core of the story. I personally believe it. They had joined the lady Oba fell in love with. That's Tini. The character mm -hmm. with the female friend in the group. The story would have still worked. Hmm. Okay, well, that's coming from a movie producer. So I think story-wise, I think because they did, I, this is what I think happened. They had a, they had a group, of a, lo, a large amount of ideas. And they wanted to make some big um, story that was... That would touch all the ideas. That was touching and then, and then there'll be some sort of climax that brings everything together. together. But however, I believe that 
when writing a, a film and you believe that that film is really worth making, I believe sometimes you have to kill your darlings and let some things go so that the script can work better. And I think, I think on, this, on the part of the writers and the producers, I think they were unwilling to let some things go because they believed strongly in it. And because you have a sh limited time to tell your story, you can't flesh everything, everything out. out. So yeah. now everything is just hanging down. You understand? Yes, so it's like, that's how I see it, uh, okay. story-wise. So, uh, a four over 10. Hmm. Mm. Man. OK, anyways. But then, I don't think there's anything wrong with the story for me. The no. story was really nice. From a viewer's perspective, it was entertaining and it was awesome. Moving on to the cinematography. Um, for me, I, I, I think from a viewer's perspective, the cinematography was compelling, especially given the camera angles, the area shot of the Isaleko, because I have never been to Isaleko. I don't know Isaleko. So looking at it from the... Um, looking at it from the camera angle in the movie mm -hmm. gave me like... A, a picture of what Isaleko really looks like. So I think that also is something that some viewers out there who have not really been to that area at least now have uh, a glimpse of what real Isaleko looks like. And that's something I think they were able to capture within the limited, um, should I say, space or time that they had. And But what do you think as a producer? What do you think? Well, one thing I can say is that over the years, it's something that I will always give credit to the Nigerian film industry. Is uh, we've tried to make do with what we have, mm -hmm. but over time, as the industry has grown and uh, we've become more capable, we've been taking advantage of new technology and new new equipment and better um, approaches to filmmaking. So when they use the quality of cameras they use, the better lighting and all that, it, it improves the Nigerian, the production value when it comes to the cinematography. You can't question, it's actually very good. Moving on to the acting and casting. Um, even though you had said the story um, was sort of not a 10-10, sort of, um, when it comes to the casting, I, I'll give the casting director a thumbs up because given the transition, should I say the transformation of the actors, the characters from when they were children to being adult was really cool because you could see this splitting image of their adulthood and their childhood. You can see the similarity, yes. You can, unlike in most Nollywood movies, or rather, should I say, some Nollywood movies whereby you see the child looking different, then when he or she grows up, it's an entirely different person. You can't really connect the, the, the person to the, same, mm. uh -huh, to the same person that he or she was as a child. But in this case, from Obalola to Ifi to Git, especially Adesua's character really, really mm. was something I, I was like, okay, wow. I wonder where they got this girl from. Like they, the casting direct, director must have really done, like must have really, shall I say, searched Lagos, the entire Lagos to look for that girl. Mm. So she could, you know, have a similar resemblance with Adesua. But do you think that was really cool from your own perspective? Yeah. Um I, be, I I think the from the look of the people, I think it it works well with the story they were telling. Mm -hmm. I also think um, it was smart to use you know people like uh, Pasuma, you know, yeah, you know names that add credibility to the movie and all that. And there's uh, Latin. The Latin, yes. And uh, you know. Adesua and all that because those names actually, you know, they open doors and they they bring in people to the seats, so you know, see. to watch the movie. So I think it was well, strat strategy wise, I think it was well implemented, the casting decisions. Yes. Okay, do you think some part of the scenes, especially the acting, was overstretched? Like for me, the action parts, the fights, the fight scenes. No, so that's now going into um, <laughs> the editing and 
and, and, and all that. So I think, I think whoever the editor was, I don't think the editor and the people who planned the action scenes were able to communicate, to communicate with themselves. Okay. Because I, I think the edits, when watching the action scenes, you could tell where they could have cut half a second to make the impact make more, uh, for the fights to have more impact. impact okay. So there would be shots that would be too long, so it would make the fight look flimsy. Hmm. Also, I don't think when it comes to the action scenes, the people they chose to fight in those scenes were people who probably had any training or who understood the choreography of a, of a fight scene. So when you watch it, as brutal as it could be, it looked unconvincing. You understand? And when you are trying to depict a realistic, semi-realistic representation of, of what's happening in the streets, it's hard for someone to believe that three people will gang up on a lady with baseball bats. She be there. <laughs> and she will stand up and beat all three. All three. Mm. You understand? So, and nobody who is going into a real fight where someone has your life in their hands and you're trying to fight Kung Fu. It makes it, especially in the streets of Lagos, nobody has time to fight Kung Fu. So I don't know, I don't know. I think they had an idea of a way to make the fight look more interesting. But I don't know if the editor was on the same page with the people who planned the fight scene. So Speaking of the fight, don't you think, don't you think it's, more of Western way of um, way of uh, fighting, like that's what I'm saying. Because I that's don't think I'm that's saying. something that Lagosians will really. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying that whoever planned the fight scene thought of ways to make it look more exciting, regardless of the fact that you're trying to depict something that's happening in the streets of Lagos. Okay. So they couldn't marry the two. And I think that, and the editor couldn't, the editor was trying to do what he could. And it, you know, it made the thing seem off. I think that's where the issue is. So the next thing I'd like to talk about is the soundtrack. The soundtrack for me sort of enhanced the viewing experience in terms of the music, the sound effect, and um, that's just me saying it from a viewer's perspective. Mm. Now, from your perspective, do you think the sound? What do you think about the soundtrack generally? Um, I think soundtracks are a major issue that Nigeria has yet to overcome. Mm. Um, but I can't fault the film for that. I just think it's a general issue that Nigeria, like the Nigerian film industry is still learning to overcome. I think the soundtrack for the film is okay for, as it is. I don't, but I don't think it elevates the movie to some high, new height. That's what I think. Okay. Well, guys, <laughs> you've heard it all, and um, that's it for this show. Um, but before we go, I'd like you to give your general impression of the movie, like just briefly. Um, Gangs of Lagos is an attempt to give a, a cinematic representation of what it's like to be in the streets of Lagos. Mm -hmm. However, its attempt is watered down by the meandering story. Mm. So there's a lack of focus in the story, which can actually lose the audience as to whatever you're trying to tell. And you could also lose your audience based on the nature of the action scenes. Mm. But the fact that you have something that actually shows the gritty nature of the streets, the of, streets Lagos of Lagos is something that is commendable. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Okay, so Gangs of Lagos is still streaming on Prime Video. If you haven't seen it, go and watch it. And it's a wrap, guys. Until next time, see you in my next video. It's still your girl, Ramat. Bye. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. You guys think I'll forget that? No way. <laughs> All right. See you guys in my next video. Bye. Bye.